Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, How to Flip Your Classroom in an Online and Hybrid Environment. Thank you for taking time out and being here today. I'm Emily Park, the Marketing Manager here at McGraw Hill Canada, and we are excited to be hosting this session in this confusing yet interesting time. Before we jump on to today's main topic, I have a few housekeeping items. First, today's 45 minute long webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand a couple of days after this live session. As we have a very large group today, your lines are muted and the videos are deactivated to ensure the best webinar experience. For the questions, please post your questions on a Q&A box that you can find on the bottom of the screen. My portfolio manager partner, Amy Clark Spankley, will moderate the Q&A during the session. We have saved time for the questions at the end of the presentation, but Amy will be mod moderating the Q&A box throughout. After today's webinar, you will receive the follow-up email with the webinar recording in the post-survey link. Your feedback will be very helpful for us to develop other webinar sessions that suit your interest. So now I'm very pleased to introduce today's speaker, Frank T. Rothermel. Frank T. Rothermel is a professor of strategy and innovation, holds the Russell and Nancy McDonough uh, chair in the Scheller College of Business at Georgia Tech. And he is an Alfred P. Sloan Industry St Study Fellow. Bloomberg Business Week named Frank one of, the, uh, one of Georgia Tech's prominent faculty while poets and quants selected Frank as one of the favorite business school professor teaching MBAs. The Kaufman Foundation views Frank as one of the world's 75 thought leaders in entrepreneurship and innovation. Based on having uh, published papers in the top 1% based on citation, Thomson Router identified Frank as one of the world's most influential scientific minds. He has visited Canada many times, mainly through hockey. He played with many former NHL players in the past, but then he realized that he was not as good as his friends, and maybe that's how he decided to pursue his career in academia. And we are so happy to have him as a speaker today. All right, uh, without further ado, over to you, Frank. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, Amy. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, time is the greatest gift of all, so I'd like to welcome my friends in Canada, uh, business and economics professors, and I appreciate the chance to uh, discuss a bit about how what I learned about flipping the classroom in an online hybrid environment and to learn from you. So uh, thanks for a generous introduction, Emily. My mother would love to hear it. Um, Frank, this is fine. And um, it paid off to pay attention to school because I'll be selling hockey boots today at some known name rank uh, somewhere. So um, how to flip your classroom in an online environment, um, connect concepts and cases. So I was 28 years old when I taught my first uh, university college course. And the way I did it was basically lecture from the book uh, and stayed one chapter ahead of the students where they would uh, they would figure out that I don't know very much. And um, it went okay because it was a microeconomics course I could hide behind equations, but I didn't feel good about um, my value at it. And I don't think the students gotten that much out of it. So um, why do I say this? Because um, there's studies that show that uh, experience is the best teacher and great teachers are made not born. So talent is overrated and uh, experience helps us to learn how to teach better and it helps us to learn how to teach in an, an environment that's hybrid uh, online and try to flip our classroom, especially under these new challenges we, we all be facing over the last uh, year or so. Um, so a bit of background. Um, so I taught for 25 years now, um, all levels, undergraduate, MBA, executive, uh, many different courses, uh, strategy, principles, microeconomics, business ethics, government and society, entrepreneurship. So my comments today actually, I think, would apply to all business school disciplines as more business school disciplines also move to case studies and hybrid is uh, here to stay post pandemic, I'm pretty sure at least to some extent. So we all, including myself, need to level up here. Um, I taught full-time, part-time, traditional, non-traditional students, 
uh, first time college students and so forth. Um, I also want to emphasize that I uh, taught in five different countries. Um, I myself was born outside the United States. I was born in Germany. I worked and lived in about half a dozen countries. Um, and I've been to Asia and, and worked in Asia, Europe, and North America. So in all the content I prepare and created, I try not to use a uh, US-centric perspective, uh, rather focus on a very cosmopolitan uh, perspective um to to be to be uh, not just uh, us centric um i also taught hybrid and online and so forth um okay um so our business model is changing um but it hasn't changed in 600 years here's a painting from uh mid-century 14th uh, 1450 mid 15th century bologna italy uh called the lecture um actually the polism in german meaning uh the reading and why this was only a few decades after Gutenberg's invention of the printing press. And so the professor basically read the book. So this is how I started teaching myself. So the first thing we see here is our business model hadn't changed in 600 years, right? Uh, the professor read the book and we see the same behavior as we see with the day students. We saw that 600 years ago. Uh, here said one student that's hung over from last night. Here is the clique that's, uh, that's catching up on social gossip, which now happens online in social media, but um, they, they're catching up on the latest gossip. Here is the aspiring graduate student that dreams of being a professor after he completes his PhD and serves many more years under the professor. So one day he thinks about him, him being up at the podium. And here's that one student who pays attention because he couldn't get a book or he didn't buy the book. So uh, fast forward uh, 600 years. Um, this is just a picture taken shortly before the pandemic. Standard operating procedures in many business schools and many universities across subjects in the world, from the lecture, deep profession experts, hundreds of students, all the way from 50 to 500 or more in lecture halls. I myself have lectured in front of an audience of 900 students um, in Germany. It's, an, it's a very strange experience. Um, and so the point here is our business model hadn't changed in 600 years. And the model was that the professor is the expert. She gets the knowledge from books and online and delivers this knowledge to the student. Linear, sequential process. The student, the empty vessel filled by the expertise from the professor. Um, however, we know black swans happen, the high impact of low probability events. Uh, COVID-19 was a high impact event on higher education. Another special issue, uh, just last August, The Economist um, showed how it affects the uh, university college world, uh, the competition among them, which schools will thrive, which schools will be um, um, having problems and so forth. And uh, here's a quote, um, there are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen uh, by Lenin. Uh, just for the record, uh, I do not subscribe to Marxist Lenin's thoughts as a government employee. I should make that clear. However, this is precisely what happened with us when the pandemic struck. I precisely remember March, uh, it was Friday, March 13th. We had a mandatory faculty meeting, um, which is a rare occasion. Uh, so all of us met in the big auditorium and we were told that we have one week to switch our courses online to teach during the pandemic and beyond. And so we achieved this within a week or two, which we didn't accomplish over decades when we were brought in by the dean's office to offer online uh, uh, offerings and so forth, which we didn't, didn't do for a number of reasons. Anyway, so um, change that takes decades happened in weeks. So what's the challenge is not just COVID-19, which completely upended the business model, but there's pressures that were before COVID-19 and which are here to stay. So pressure from a variety of stakeholders on universities and professors, accreditation bodies, students, parents, public policy, uh, reduction of funding and so forth. Uh, higher performance demands in professor, on professors and colleges to deliver in placements of students, uh, performance metrics and so forth. Um, allegedly short attention spans for students. I think that's something every generation says about the next one, but there is some evidence based on this 
uh, social media consumption and these uh, completely different uh, fragmented times of attention rather than reading a book, for example. And we also hear that students are ill prepared for the real world in basically doing their jobs, meaning the education we provide may not be the ones that is needed today. And we face competition from free offerings, uh, online offerings, including massive open online courses. So there's a lot of competitive pressures on us as business school professors. Um, why is this important? Because our task is to help students to close the knowing and doing gap. There's a difference between knowing about operations and doing operations. A difference about knowing about finance and be able to uh, run, run uh, the financing needs of a, of a startup or a company. Um, same, same with strategy and management and so forth. So we need to close this gap and flipping this classroom helps us to do this. And especially my thesis is that flipping has become more important in a hybrid environment. Um, I call the three C's of effective teaching in online and hybrid environment. Uh, I teach strategy, but I think it's applicable to all business school disciplines. Again, as we all move more towards the case method also. So I focus on concepts, uh, cases, and I use Connect, which is an adaptive learning system to integrate these components when I teach strategy. I will go into detail in each of those uh, triangles in a second. So um, why flip and what's the flip classroom model? The idea here is that the learning takes learning, especially fundamental learning definitions, a ground knowledge, basic knowledge happens, uh, is shifted outside the classroom where the student learns on his or her own time, his or her own pace, acquires basic knowledge, comes to the classroom and is better prepared to participate in more critical thinking which then allows us to add more value as value as educators. Uh, why would you want to flip a classroom? So why want you want, want to put this business model on its head, basically? Well, content today is digital. Um, a number of years ago, when I had an ebook, it was a novelty. Today, if it's not digital, the students won't like it. Uh, they will have access 24-7 anywhere, anytime on any device and globally as we learned, which is very important because some students currently cannot enter uh, to US. Um, they also are able to access content online and offline. Um, but even more important, I think it's individualized and adaptive rather than one size fits all. You can meet the students where she's at. Uh, the student when he studies can pause, rewind, fast forward, repeat, binge, basically study the way it's best suited for them rather than one size fits all and the professor is the expert. And again, I'm happy to, I will share all my slides of course with you and I'm happy to, to engage in, in the Q&A at the end of, of the session. Um, students come more prepared to class and it allows us to really focus on more value added teaching, which allows us to justify why we should be uh, employed as professors, right? And we meet our students where they're at. Millennials, Generation C, this is how they acquire their knowledge through devices, uh, phones, tablets, and so forth. Small bits and pieces of information rather than sitting down reading long 500-page um, books. Um, questions to how to flip. So experience is the best teacher. There's a few basic things that will help us to flip the classroom. It's not rocket science and it's easy to implement. So if I can do it, many people can do it. If I can do it, everyone can do it basically. Teaching an online hybrid environment. Um, one very important thing is you have to have a lot more class structure. When you teach in the traditional in-classroom setting, we all like to, and we all rely on improvisation, which is great because we can feel the energy of the class and where the discussion is going. Uh, when you have an online session or a hybrid session, you have need a, a lot more structure to know exactly what happens when, and the students need to also have the structure. So they have clear guidance because you're missing the face-to-face -face interaction with them. What I do is I establish a very explicit learning contract where I make my expectations very clear before the semester. My syllabus is uh, more than 10 pages, but 
It is also often mentioned in the reviews, uh, the students like it, that the course is well organized, there's no surprises, and students love that it's exactly the process that was lined out. Um, make technology work for you. Um, either university will tell you what technology you can use or you have a choice. Um, we use certain technologies, uh, BlueJeans for required teaching and Zoom and Teams. Uh, pick a few of those and know how to do the basics and feel comfortable using them at prime time. When we switched online, I practiced with a few colleagues before we actually went live uh, uh, doing this. Um, establishing learning contract is very important and I share my syllabus before my class ever meets and I make it mandatory that is read before we have our first meeting online. Uh, and I focus on the four piece of students responsibilities, uh, preparation, presence, participations and professional behavior at all times. Basically, I lay out explicit ground rules so the students know exactly what's expected of them and I do the same thing for myself. Um, so how do I flip? How do I flip? Um, Connect allows me to flip the classroom. I will explain Connect in a minute. It's an adaptive online learning software which allows you to basically flip the concept, content outside the classroom to have the students work on their own time and where you can see the student progress um, and come better prepared to class. So Connect allows me to flip the classroom. Um, what is Connect? It's a course management adaptive individualized learning solution that allows you to focus on more value added techniques and teaching in the classroom. So we are not professors until we profess what we believe and what we can add beyond what the students have read. So rather than me reading the microeconomics textbooks to the student, uh, we can discuss it, we can uh, look at critical thinking, we can apply different lenses, we can look at deeper problems and apply them to current events and try to make sense of the world and help them to become better decision makers in the world now where they have more information uh, or too much information rather than too little. When I was a student, a grad student, we had to go to the library, uh, to the old library, and we had the, the big breakthrough was LexisNexis. Uh, now the students have too much information so they need theories and concepts to make sense of it. And here are some bullet points that are directly from our syllabus. Uh, so Connect contains the required readings, ebook and smartbook, adaptive learning system, mini cases, full lens cases, as well as quizzes. And what a smart book, smart book is an adaptive experience, adaptive reading experience that personalizes content to meet the needs of each learner. Basically, the idea came from medical school in preparing students for board examinations. So you read a chapter in the operations book or in, in my strategy text and questions, probes will pop up and the students will be assessed on his or her knowledge and will be guided through the readings. Basically, an adaptive, individualized process and I'll show some data in a minute. Um, it's accessible to multiple devices, online and offline, which makes it very attractive for students. Uh, here's a link you can look up later. But basically the idea is Connect allows me to completely flip the content towards the student. It also allows me to save a lot of time. I spend two afternoons at the beginning of the semester and can map up the entire semester. I know what will happen when and so do the students. And so for the rest of the semester, I can focus on what happens in the classroom. And I also have more time for my uh, research and other writing uh, I do and service activities we engage in. OK, so here's a screenshot from my syllabus. I highlighted the bullets earlier, but this is what I communicate to the students. Um, and I also provide a direct link where they can basically um, uh, obtain Connect and what does this do? It's a very competitively priced and it creates a link between a student and a learning resource rather than having to go through a third party and pay additional uh, margin. Um, so let me talk a bit about how I flip it using Connect, okay? Um, it allows me to flip concepts and cases. I will talk about both of those triangles in more detail just now. Um, so the three C's of effective teaching, connect concepts and cases. Let's start with concepts. This is also a screenshot from my syllabus, just from this week, actually. Right now, I teach a strategy course. Um, and we meet once a week for three hours. So this is also equivalent to 
two times a week, one and a half hours. So this is a, a, a screenshot from my syllabus for this week, Tuesday. On the left, you can see the task for the students, readings, case study, and connect. So I asked them to read uh, two chapters, um, competitive advantage, firm performance and business models, and business strategy, differentiation, cost leadership, and blue oceans. Uh, they were asked to read a case study, Netflix. I asked them to watch a documentary, Netflix versus the world. And in Connect, I asked them to work through the smart book quizzes, chapters five and six, and the mini case quiz on the business model innovation, how Dollar Shave Club disrupted GLED. Um, what's important here is all this happens before class. So this means the deadline is before class. Students need to do this before they show up. And I know exactly who did what, how long they spent on it, and how they did. Okay, why is this important? Because um, this allows me to fine tune the content. So this is uh, a screenshot of what the student sees. Here is how I set up the semester uh, uh, before the semester even starts. So in this week, you'll see that uh, chapter five and six was released on, on February 2nd and due on February 9th. Uh, including the mini case. So smart book, SB, SB, and the, and the mini case. And so I have this for all my assignments throughout the entire semester. So much more important, assessing student performance. We're all accredited and we have to assess performance uh, and also we want to know how, how well our students learn. So here is um, the average performance for the entire class where I actually um, focus on pass fail acquiring basic knowledge in the chapters so in the chapters in the smart book i provide multiple attempts and no time limit because the idea is i like to give an incentive for the students to study this chapter not take an exam and i achieve a 93 percent average it means on average um, i have 65 students uh, in my class 63 students actually do the work uh, and on average there are a, a 93%, meaning if you want to do the work, if you want to get an A on this part, you can get it. And why do I do it? It's kind of a head fake because I know that the student has worked carefully through those readings. We all know nothing is worse than teaching a class when the students do not come prepared. It's a very difficult task and it's very dissatisfying, particularly after you and I spend hours preparing a class. Um, but it also allows me to dig deeper. So for example, last week in that mini case, the average student performance was only um, 66%, which is quite low. Um, and so I asked myself, what happened here? So I can look at individual students, but I also can look at, have Connect give me some analysis of the entire class. And that's what I did here in the next screenshot. So I went to this quiz and said, what happened here? And uh, what I found out, there's one question that only 26% of the students got right. So a little bit better than uh, random checking a box. There was, I think, five uh, possible answers. So 20% ex-ante, a little bit better. Um, so then I actually dug deeper into the question. It turns out um, there's a concept and strategy called the resource based view of the firm, as many of you know. And there was a question about the Starbucks case and the students have problem understanding some of those concepts on the value, rarity, hard to imitate, and organization uh, for competitive advantage. So this also showed me before class that this part of the reading, I need to emphasize more or we need to go back and look at this. So this is not just um, the student's fault. This could be a not so good question. But it turns out it was a concept that I didn't cover as much, but should have covered in more depth. Um, Frank? Yes. We had a yeah. question uh, about whether the students have the data shared with them as well. Yes, absolutely. Because what happens is uh, when you have a 66% average on, an, on, an, on one of the assignments, first of all, the great thing what I do is I have dozens, about 30 of these assignments. So what I've done is I've broken the big exam in like 30 different pieces. So each piece is not as heavily weighted, which takes out the contention of a 60% exam. Uh, secondly, it still concerns the student. He or she comes with the 66%, some as low as 25%. They email me 
And then I actually go back and discuss it either online uh, or in class when we meet virtually with the entire class and say, here's what happened and I do share the data on average uh, and, and there's no need to identify students, but I do share the average data and I look at those items and we discuss, and then I take it more back to a larger concept that needs to be reviewed. And you know what? The students are completely fine with this in the sense that um, perhaps I didn't cover it as well. Um, they know others didn't do as well. Um, so it gives us, it helps us to fine tune where the flipped classroom, where we need to do a bit more in class on, on these particular concepts. The long answer to this question, the short answer is yes, I share the, these data with the students. So the great thing about Connect, I can also pull up any individual student performance, which I also share with them um, as, as sometimes the discussions come, come, up, come along. Okay, that's the concepts. So for each concept, I use these chapters in the text and use the SmartBook Adaptive Learning System. Cases. Cases is a bit more tricky. Uh, how do I flip the classroom with cases? First of all, we got to ask, oh, there's different types of cases. Um, based on the learning objective, in this week, I pick a case. So each week I have a theory, hour and a half concepts, and hour and a half case. So uh, last week was on, on differentiation strategy, internal analysis, we used Netflix. Um, so the smaller cases, two to three pages long, mini cases, full length cases are ones we're all familiar with, uh, full information, financial uh, 20 pages, live case projects, case discussion questions, which I present to the students before the semester. I uh, use videos, documentaries, and movies. As we saw, I required them to watch a Netflix documentary uh, prior to class, uh, animated uh, whiteboard videos, and so forth. They're all assigned um, before class. And as we go along, I provide updates on social media. Um, I don't want to go too much on the different types of cases, but I want to sh share with you quickly how I teach a case in a flipped classroom, and then we should be having time for, for Q&A. Uh, again, a screenshot from my syllabus. And here again, remember my earlier point on structure. So in the flipped classroom, in a hybrid environment, I shift some of the responsibility for discussions to the student teams. So in each section, I have 65 students. We get like 12 teams. And then I ask them, each learning team should work through the case discussion questions and be prepared to kick off the discussion with a 10 to 15 minute presentation using slides. I will call on groups randomly to lead discussions, so please be prepared. So the set of questions they have, they work through those for the week, and then I call on a team to kick us off. Often I also use a warm call, which is like uh, when we meet at two o'clock in the afternoon, even the evening before or in the morning, I send an email to the team, hey, I say, hey, team eight, I probably will call on you uh, just to give you a heads up. Um, I don't give them a week in advance notice, but I give them a half a day or a couple hours, uh, and I call this a warm call, and so they're not completely randomly called, um, but the, the excitement for each team is still there. No, no team knows when they will be on, and they're all prepared, which makes for great discussions, and I end up actually calling on two teams because I always want to hear a second opinion, and I use this to kick off the case discussion. Um, which allows me to close the knowing and doing gap um, as the students are better prepared for the cases. And then I'll, at the end, we will discuss them and then I'll close them up with some takeaways. And so why would you want to do all this, right? Um, so it allows you to flip the classroom, is a full immersive, immersive experience, uh, keeps the students engaged, makes them responsible for their own learning. I also had a lot of students that said in the past, Professor, I love to learn, but I test poorly. So now I have like 30 or so assignments throughout the semester. I take two days before the semester and set up the whole 15 weeks and they can achieve their grade they want. Um, it's individualized adaptive. Uh, team learning is um, made possible. And it's great to keep the data when we get accredited to show what we've used. They're all tied back to learning objectives and student assessment. And it's also discounted all digital learning package as it creates a relationship between the student and the publisher. Uh, in my product, I offer uh, complementary 12 most popular cases. Um, they're most popular by Harvard Business Publishing and they included basically for free for the students in the Connect package.
And it comes with a complete suite of teaching resources, meaning teaching notes, PowerPoint slides, lecture notes, and so forth. Um, this is my textbook. There's a link you can look at this later, but I want to emphasize a few points that may be of interest. Um, Connect is a very competitively priced um, in North America and Canada, it's $89. Canadian uh, is the ebook, the depth of learning system, you read anywhere application, and also the cases. Uh, here's a set of the uh, 5e, which was just published. There's a new edition. Uh, the 12 cases, a lot of hot companies, Airbnb, Facebook, Starbucks, Vanguard, McDonald's, Best Buy, Tesla, Netflix, Amazon, Apple, Walt Disney, Nike. The book itself has a bunch of um, Canadian um, cases, mini cases, uh, Blackberry uh, on the not so successful side, maybe comeback, we'll see. And then uh, Shopify as one of the high flyers right now, as, as shown the cosmopolitan angle. And you can see that many of those cases are very popular uh, also in Harvard Business Publishing, uh, Facebook, Starbucks, McDonald's, Tesla, Nestle, Netflix, uh, Walt Disney, meaning um, these are these are bestsellers. Uh, also, we are Harvard Business Publishing. Long story short, uh, it took about 25 minutes, so I want to say thank you for your time. I hope this was useful to you. Um, again, I will share my slides. Uh, here's my email. Uh, the website has complete uh, access to the teaching resources information uh, and my strategy teaching. Uh, all teaching related content is there. So it's my initials, ftrstrategy.com. And I'm also on, on Twitter, if you like uh, to join us there on the social media. Um, so Emily and um, Amy, time is um, yours now. Um, thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions, comments, compliments, concerns, anything. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank so, you much, so much, Frank. Frank. No, compliments no compliments yet, but I'm sure they're just, they're just typing, typing them away. Them away. <laughs> um, we um, did we have did one have question, question about, about whether, whether you pay students, students with grades grade for, for completing the smart book, book quizzes, quizzes, and mini cases. Quizzes are the grades, grades for completion, for performance, performance, and how much for the total grade? grade. Yes, I, I do both. I do both. So what is the incentive? Um, there's two, two ways to look at this. One is, uh, or there's two things for us to consider. One is we want the student to learn, right? We want them to do the work. So um, in the smart book chapters, I take out the stress exam component in the sense that it is, uh, I do not time the assignment. The students can take anywhere from an hour to five hours. Uh, I also give multiple attempts. So what I require is in the smart book readings and the smart book quizzes, I ask them to, they have to complete 50 questions, let's say. Um, they get a few wrong, other questions will pop up. And because of adaptive, it will either be harder questions if they get the first one right, or easier questions they have to go back. So not every student has a different experience as they go through the content. And to accommodate this, I give a pass fail. So you have to complete these questions to get credit and that's 100%. And that means kind of a participation grade. Uh, and then I have quizzes online um, now that we can't meet in person anymore, uh, which are one attempt and timed. Um, so, and I flip around 50% to 60% of my grade is flipped outside the classroom. Of those is 40 percentage points is, is uh, you do the work, you can get the A, 25% uh, on those is, is individual exams. And then we have um, the, the group work and the case discussions and also the individual work um, in class, okay? So um, the answer is both. Thank you. Okay, so some compliments have come in. Uh, people saying thank you. And there was a fantastic overview of the flipped classroom. Um, we did have a question is, how do you handle the possibility of students accessing and sharing case write-ups from the internet? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, sharing case write-ups, there's two things to, to address this. Um, first of all, the cases I use are all very current. Um, so I pride myself on my cases being probably the most current in the industry. Um, and so I think the quality of the write-ups that are online um, is probably easily discernible. And, um, and I provide 
uh, precise questions. So my discussion questions you saw earlier in the McDonald's case are not questions that are floating around the internet. So I changed my questions. So there's one question about Kapinski, who was just appointed CEO. Um, so my questions are fine-tuned for this semester. And I also change the cases every semester. So I don't have a, a plagiarism issue from um, semester to semester or across sections. Um, so I'm not concerned about this. And I think all our students can deliver higher quality than what they can find online. And many are motivated just not to um, copy, copy stuff. And there's also this peer control because it's a team, right? Um, so that, that cheating online is more likely to happen in individual assignments than in group assignments as there's some peer control. It had, I did not have a problem with that. No. All right. Oh, so many questions just popped up at the same time. Um, one question, when it comes to cases for a strategy course, how do you make sure that the assessments done on Connect is supplemented by more qualitative assessment of student learning in live case discussions? Yeah, great question, Matt. Uh, I saw it now in the chat coming up too. Um, so the Connect keep, think about the Connect work as a warm up. Uh, we still spend, I spend 90 minutes in on the case discussion in class. What I actually learned uh, in the virtual environment, in the hybrid environment, that class discussions and content takes much longer than it takes in a traditional classroom. So 90 minutes on the case is easily spent. And the way it's spent is if each team takes 10 minutes, sorry, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you got 60 minutes. And then basically after the a kickoff, uh, we discuss this case, uh, I guide the discussion, there are certain concepts I want to bring home, and then at the end I spend 10 minutes going through uh, takeaways uh, on the case, basically um, highlighting frameworks and concepts from the readings, how to make sense of this case. So to answer the question, I have at least 75 minutes in class case discussion. Uh, we keep we keep a record of the chat. Uh, every session is recorded. I have I, I have the luxury of having a graduate student sit in also. Um, but it's 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 actually easier done. I can actually see whether the students are uh, attentive. I require a video link. Another little tip is we use uh, Blue Jeans, which has 25 panels. But I ask the students to refresh those. So some students turn the cameras off, others on. So my panel refreshes. And at the same time, I'm monitoring the chat. Um, it's a little different than in the classroom, but there's definitely qualitative uh, learning assessments to, to this. So thank you, Matt. Perfect. And also, Matt added, also, have you felt any pushback from students working on cases on big name firms, as those do tend to be used in various courses? Great, great question. So um, absolutely. So there's, there's, there's two ways to think about this. So um, just last night, I had a discussion with my colleague who teaches a course on technology strategy, and he's using uh, a Tesla case, which I'll teach next week. Uh, when I was an MBA student, I actually liked using the same case from a different angle. So we coordinate across, across um, courses, right? Um, and at Georgia Tech, I teach uh, strategy, um, undergraduate and M MBAs. Um, what we do, what I learned from student surveys, which is easily done also um, in Canvas through your management learning system, by the way, Connect is fully integrated, um, is that my students actually ask to use not so high tech companies, uh, use more companies like McDonald's and others and Walmart because they're using all the high tech companies in the uh, other courses as our focus is on management of technology. Having said this, so there is this trade-off between well-known companies and uh, niche companies, right? Uh, well-known companies are good in the sense that students can relate to the product, they know something about it, uh, they're well covered, versus um, is, it, is it one more case on, on Apple, right? So I, I avoid cases that are overexposed, which has been Apple, now Tesla is becoming overexposed, uh, when I was a student, it was Dell and Southwest Airlines. Um, so I think there's a fine, fine tune, uh, fine tune middle way. Uh, a simple spreadsheet for us as, as instructors, where we actually talk to one another and keep track of who's teaching what, uh, is very helpful there. I love that. I love that cross, like that faculty working together to make sure 
that not poor McDonald's is just over-focused. All right, how, this, this I, I anticipated this question. How do you deal with students making cost arguments? So for example, those who wanna use used books or want sharing one book amongst themselves. Um, so David is a great question. Um, I think now with the discounted prices where um, connects available like for 89 Canadian dollars is extremely cost competitive versus the old days. Um, I was never in favor publishers charging 225 books on a, on a uh, hardcover book. Um, I look at the way as an adaptive uh, learning system and an investment in the in the future of the student. And it also is a way um, in our current environment, it is we need to have some kind of adaptive individualized assessment since we don't have that traditional classroom anymore. Um, so it's a good question, um, but I think the prices have come down to be uh, very competitive. And I know Amy and Emily can probably speak more to this. I think uh, the publishers also have inclusive access, which further drives down the cost. I think it's cost competitive with used books, um, but good question. Um, on the earlier question in the case, I didn't emphasize it enough. One of my favorite experience as a student was actually when faculty used the same case on four days and we looked at it from operations, finance, marketing and strategy all within the same week. So that was also coordinated by the faculty, but it was a fantastic experience. So coordination um, and um, fine tuning case selection, very important in different types of cases. Thank you. Okay, so we have a question. Um, do you have any strategies for easing the challenges of students working across different time zones in reference to the teamwork you spoke of? What about accommodating time zone issues in your live flipped class? Yeah, great question. So one great thing about flipped is that the students basically I set us up before the semester and the students have one week to do their assignments. So this is completely in, independent from time zones, right? They got they got 168 hours to do it regardless of where they're at. Uh, because I set the time here and the time is to be for class and whatever the time zone is, it equates to the same amount of time. Same for the learning teams, right? They have a week to prepare and the teams make this work. Um, this is actually better uh, than, than um, it is less of a challenge than in the lecture. All my lectures are synchronous. And so it works out okay um, with students that are in Europe, for example, but students that are in Asia that are 12, 13 hours ahead. If I teach at two o'clock, it's 3 a.m. in the morning. Uh, some join me, uh, surprisingly, uh, and about half of the uh, students in that, those countries do not. Uh, all my lectures are recorded so they can view them. Um, they have a week to do their assignments and I often talk with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, via email in the current situation. So we have, didn't have too many problems uh, with this um, because I do record it and Connect has a bunch of video uh, resources and, and I assign others uh, besides that the students can watch on their, on their own time. Yes. Perfect. And then the last question we have now, which is actually perfectly timing out for uh, the end of the session, is can I make assignments and connect prerequisites to the next assignment? So can I lock the next assignment until the student, say, masters a chapter with a, a certain grade, for example, 90%? Yes, Philippe, absolutely. So the way I do a couple of things, I do a uh, timing when it becomes available and when it's due. And um, you can make it conditional. I actually require 100% because I give multiple attempts. So they have to do it. Um, as you said earlier, the students do it um, and they're ending up with 94%. And why is this? Because two students didn't do anything. Okay. Um, so, but two students out of 65 is very good uh, for a number of reasons. And then I, what Connect allows me to do, I actually had a student just email me a few days ago said that he came down with COVID-19. Uh, I could actually go in and extend the deadlines four weeks uh, just for this one student. Uh, so there's ways to accommodate this and there's ways to fine tune. And again, initially I need a little bit of handholding. Um, my McGraw rep helped me, but after one semester, now I spend actually no more than two afternoons and set up the entire course. It's also been great to free up time for research and other things we, we, we all need to do. Uh, and managing our courses. All right, I think this is the perfect timing indeed. So kudos to your you know, time management skill, Amy and Frank. 
So we are getting to the end of today's webinar. So thank you, Frank, and thank you everyone for the active participation. Before you go, I would like to remind that um, Farah Hill is here for you. At the moment, we are facing so many unknowns. As a trusted partner, we would like to help you with building your course online. Please reach, reach out to us if you need any help with your online courses. All right, I will wrap up today's webinar now. So see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Amy, and thank you, Emily. Thank bye you, bye. Frank. Thank you, Amy.